Hello Psych220! In this video I'm going to show you how to use some tools that we've provided to cite your sources and format your papers according to the um, publication manual of the American Psychological Association 7th edition. So let me show you what tools we've given you. We know that a lot of you might not have this book at your house and so if you go to the library guide that we created for your class, you can see the link up here, and click on the APA citations link. We've provided some resources to help you cite your sources without having to buy the book. Um, if you're in Professor Munoz's class, she's asked that you use the student paper format, but that you add an abstract, and I'll show you what that means. So the first source that we're going to see of information is from the APA itself and it talks about the format of the papers. So you can see how it will describe the order of the pages, the spacing, the margins for example. If I click on this it tells you one inch margins um, and if you click here you're going to see some sample papers. So your professor wants you to use the student paper format and this describes what that is. So the student title, um, the paper title, right, and, and just how the format, the paper is formatted for a student paper as opposed to a professional paper. There are information about references. What should your reference list or your bibliography look like, right? So they have examples. One of the things you guys are will cite the most are journal articles and this tells you what the journal article citation should look like and what I normally do is I grab my citation from the database where I got the journal article so if I click this link over here it will show me the APA citation I generally copy and paste it into a Word document and then I'll compare it with the citation style here it's important to remember that the citations created by the databases are created by a computer. And so there can be mistakes and it might be missing some information that you need under APA number seven. And it's really up to you as the professional to fix the citation so it complies with the new rules. There's also information about what your in-text citation should look like because this could be really confusing for students. So if you're quoting somebody in someone's paper versus if you're quoting one of your research participants, what do those things look like? And a lot of things that we do in APA is we paraphrase, especially in the literature review at the beginning of the paper. And this shows you some different examples of how you cite studies when you're paraphrasing them, including one that's really common, which is when you are citing more than one work at a time. So that's really useful as well. The last thing is anything else that you haven't seen already is included in this All Topics link. So you can learn about how to set up tables and figures. You can learn about the grammatical style, including the use of the word of they as a singular and when someone's gender identity doesn't conform to male or female, right? Um, different things like that. Lastly, if you get stuck, you can get help from a librarian whenever the library is open. So you have my personal information, a link to my chat widget when I'm on call. Also on the guide, you see this little link to our the chat widget for any of the librarians on call. You can just click right here and you'll get to talk to a librarian and you can share screens with each other so that they can see your paper and give you specific advice on what to do with the formatting. And your professor is also scheduling a drop-in session um, one night when you guys are in your lab. And you'll be able to come and meet with me in a Zoom room and show me your paper and I'll help you with the formatting. So I hope those resources um, help you feel less worried about formatting and citing your papers. And I look forward to helping you later in October.